Welcome to the Computer Network course. In this fourth video, we'll discuss about performance and security of computer networks. Okay. First section, we will discuss about loss, delay, and throughput of computer networks. Okay, <clears throat> let's revisit, uh, let's recall our, our previous learning about packet delay and loss. Uh, we have we have learned uh, this in the previous video that uh, whenever a package come into the router, they will be queued up within a buffer in the router. And if the buffer is full and the package cannot, uh, if the buffer is full, the package cannot be accepted again by the router, and the router simply will drop the package, and that situation makes the packet loss. Well. Yeah. After this scenario, after this, uh, until up to this slide, at least we learn two things. Uh, we learned that a package uh, will have a delay called transmission delay. It is the time need um, for the, the 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 package for being pushed out from the router to the link. And the second one is queuing delay whenever the package being queued up within the buffer in the in the router. And what what kind of um, delays that happen uh, 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 to the package uh, besides the transmission delay and queen delay. Well, there are another delays, at least there are four sources that cause the delay for a package whenever it's being sent from a house to, the, to, to another um, server. The first one is called nodal processing delay. It happens whenever the package just arrives into the router. The checking, the bit checking, and all, it's called nodal processing delay. So whenever the package just arrives into the router, it's also being processed. The second one, the querying delay. I have learned that before. The third one is transmission delay, whenever the package being pushed out to the link. And the, the last one, there is propagation delay. The actual duration uh, of a uh, transport, the package being being propagated uh, throughout the link, the physical link, to another router. We have to take note that the transmission delay is different than propagation delay. It's two different things. So you have to take note of this. Okay, let's um, see the analogy. Uh, the caravan there there are 10 car caravan uh, they want to travel from one uh, city to another city through the toll road and whenever they came to the first toll booth they have to queue up right because a particular toll booth have a kind of delay of processing each car so let's see in here a toll booth takes 12 seconds to service one car and the car itself can propagate, can tra travel to the toll road, 100 km toll road with uh, 100 km per hour speed. It means it takes one hour to propagate between one toll booth to another toll booth. But the question is how long until caravan is lined up before a second toll booth. Okay, let's see here. The time to push the entire caravan of 10 cars through this one particular toll booth is 120 seconds, two minutes, because of what? One, each car uh, will be processed by officer in the toll booth. Uh, it takes 12 seconds times 10 car. And every car will will uh, take one hour to propagate from, from one toll booth to another toll booth. So they, the total time uh, takes for the caravan to arrive in the second toll booth is Two minutes plus sixty minutes, so yeah, it it represents the uh, queuing delay, transmission delay plus propagation delay. How if we uh, we modify the scenario now? Suppose the cars, the car speed is one thousand kilometer per hour, ten times uh, faster than previous scenario. So instead of 60 minutes to propagate between first toll booth to the second one, now it only takes six minutes. But the toll booth services uh, takes a longer uh, time. It takes one minute to service a car. The question is, will cars arrive to second booth before all cars serviced at first booth? 
let's see the the queuing delay itself will take like oh, almost like 10 minutes because you know one minute for each car so the the the, the last car will takes like 10 minutes for queuing before the first toll booth and the first car will arrive in the second toll booth before that happens okay what 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 times that um the the first car need to take to travel from the first toll booth to the second one in the first toll booth uh, it takes one minute to service and it takes six minutes to travel to propagate from first toll booth to the second one so after seven minutes uh, the first car will arrive in the second toll booth while several cars will still waiting in the first toll booth. Uh, that's uh, that's the scenario where you have to consider in the actual computer network scenario. Okay, let's uh, revisit again the queuing delay. Uh, if we uh, have average package delay, average packet arrival rate A, packet uh, length L, and link bandwidth R, we can uh, consider the traffic intensity of packet length times average packet arrival rate per link bandwidth it's called traffic intensity so if the traffic intensity's value um, is around zero it means the average queuing delay is quite small but if it is uh, equal to one it means there are quite large queuing delay but the, if the value is more than one it means more package arriving cannot be serviced by a particular router so it's average infinite average delay if we um see the analogy of um car and road traffic intensity is value zero means like the the totally um zero cars within the road so no traffic jam at all if the values are uh, equal one it means quite heavy traffic jam and, and if um, the traffic intensity is uh, values more than one, it means there there are no more space for any incoming cars to for being uh, services within a, this particular road. So uh, that's being said. That's the theory being said for calculating the delays. How about the actual internet delays? How can we calculate or measure the delays uh, for a particular uh, internet traffic? So there is uh, this program called TraceRoute. It provides delay measurement uh, from source to destination. Uh, well, this program basically sends three package that will be arriving in the first hop of a router, and the router will will be responding to this package, send back the response, and the time tra time needed for travel to the first router and going back to the to the host is measured by the program. How about the second hop? Yes, it will also doing the second hop. First hop, second hop, and going back. How about the third hop? Yes, it will do that. First hop, second hop, third hop, and going back until it reaches the destination. They, the the press code will measure the, the, uh, the delay for each hop. So let's see the actual um, cal uh, measurement for, for this particular program. There is example of trace routing uh, from gaia.cs.umas edu to w.eurocom.fr so there are 19 hops uh, up be, uh, between gaia.cs to the, to the eurocom.fr we can see that there are three delays because well three package and in one and two hop the delay is quite small because well it's still first hop and second hop the router itself are located within the same geographical area or even they located in the same building but if you can see the seventh and eighth um, hop you can see that the delay is increasing dramatically um, this condition happened because there are trans oceanic link so the package must travel between oceanic link from the US to the Europe so that's why the, the, the delay become uh, significantly increasing but you can see there are interesting information here in the 12th and 13th hop. Uh, it looks like the delay decrease. Why? You can you have to uh, look out, look for what happened in this um, hop. But things, the thing is, you can see that both of the hop, both of the router, uh, already located in France. You can see that it's FR, FR, uh, located in the same 
maybe pro probably located in the same Cloverfield area. Uh, uh, in another interesting one is the 17th and the 18th um, hop. You can see that there are star, star, star. What does it mean? It means the rotor didn't respond at all to the to the to the terrestrial program. So these these are um, the the actual measurement of the delays uh, between rotor and the antenna. Okay. Now let's going back to the packet loss. So. Let's recall again what happened uh, when the, 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 the packet is lost. So it's simply when the buffer area is too full, the, the package will simply drop any package coming there. And that's the loss. Next one is throughput. So what, what is the throughput? Throughput is kind of the rate um, at which bits are being sent from sender to the receiver. So it's like uh, you can assume, uh, you can analogy, you can take analogy that the link is pipe and the package being sent is water. So in this case, different link can have different uh, size of pipe and the, the, the volume of water uh, that can be sent through this pipe is called the throughput. So you can see that the water will travel through different size of pipe so that's why you can uh, you will instead of uh, mentioning the size of the pipe as the throughput you have to actually calculate the average between two different pipe uh, uh, that, that the water or the package being sent through so the, the interesting situation is where there are two different size of pipe being used whether the first pipe is smaller than the second pipe or whether the first pipe is bigger than the second pipe. So in this case, how, how we calculate the average end-to-end -end throughput? Have to think about this. This condition is called bottleneck when, well, yes, uh, when there is any, any, any size or uh, how big uh, the size of the um, link you have but if the incoming or another um, pipe is like kind of smaller than yours you you cannot expect the actual um, throughput from your uh, pipe size this is called the bottleneck situation so let's see the actual scenario here uh, there are uh, this type of connection smaller smaller pipe going through and coming to the bigger pipe and then again separated into smaller pipe assuming there are 10 connections using this uh, network so if you want to if you want to calculate the, the per connection end-to-end -end throughput first thing first you have to divide um, the, the the rate by 10 because there are the, the 10 the, the 10 connection will share equally uh, all the connection and if you want to calculate the uh, uh, the average you have to check the minimum one the minimum um, rc rs and r so r is big so you cannot cannot calculate that probably whether rs or rc where is the minimum that's the actual throughput of your connection okay that's all for the performance now we go through the security okay first thing first uh talking about the security internet is originally not designed with much security because of what because most of the guys using the internet first first uh, version of the internet are trust for of each other so uh, they didn't think more about the security but now there are bad guys that can attack the computer network so in this uh, chapter we will learn what are the attack that can happen and also what are the lines of defense that we can um, implement to, to protect the computer networks? The first um, criminal act that can happen in the network is called sniffing. Uh, if there are packages being sent from B to A, some bad guy C can sniff the package and read the information. Maybe it's password, uh, the identity and all. Uh, well, one of the example tools for um, doing the sniffing is so called Wireshark and we will use these tools for our course. The second one, after sniffing, somebody that 
already know your information by sniffing them, sniffing it, they can pretend as you, and it's called the spoofing. The, sec the third one uh, is called denial of services. It, 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 it happens uh, whenever uh, a particular server being flooded by fake requests and so that uh, this particular server cannot actually serve the actual uh, request. So it's uh, this, this, this attack denial of services attack the availability of a particular server. It's called DOS or denial of service. So what are the lines of defense? I only mentioned the keyword here. Authentication, confidentiality, integrity checks, restriction and firewalls well we will learn about this more in the chapter 8 that's all for uh, this topic see you again in the next video